Well, the last feat ends in the green for the fourth straight week. The Nifty is now touching distance from an all-time high. What a week it was. The mid-caps outperformed the blue chips while banks underperformed. On this week's edition of the Editor's Roundtable, we take stock of the big mid and small cap movers. We put the spotlight on holding company structures and why auto companies have outperformed in a big way this year and what the you know managements are talking about. By the way, the commentary was solid in the week gone by. I'm Sonia Shanoi and today, of course, I have all the editors with me. Anuj, Nimesh, Nigel and a special guest as well, Ravi Dharamshi joining us on the show. Ravi, thanks a lot for being with us here in the studio. Uh, well, you know, since you're coming here to the studio, uh, is it the, the first time you're here? I, I remember no, you came for it. Smart Money earlier. Yeah, we've been, I've been here a couple of times before. Okay, and this time is special because the markets are at an all-time high. So, yes. I guess uh, the energy is good. How Absolutely. are you feeling about the market? Index is not, but the markets are at <laughs> a new high. <laughs> so, <laughs> index is almost there. We had a closing almost. high, actually. Almost. And, uh, I think we missed the high by about 30 points on the NFT. Yes. And, uh, are, you, uh, are you finding that euphoria? I mean, normally we see around all-time highs, big euphoria. Everybody gives you tips. Is that the same this time around? Not at Not all. Yet. I think uh, we use the term euphoria very lightly. Okay. Yeah. Euphoria is when you throw all caution to the wind. Just because price has gone up doesn't mean True. that there is euphoria. I think uh, uh, we it, it will have to be many quarters of continuous performance mm. for us to say that, okay, we are in a euphoric zone. Sure. When time period where corporates uh, announce capex with leverage, and considering that uh, you know business is going to be flowing normally, and uh, traders throw the caution to the wind, have huge leverage position. The FIIs Absolutely. are still net negative on the market. They are still uh, negatively positioned in F&O market, and on the cash market, they ba barely started buying since a month. So nowhere close to euphoria. Okay, Ravi, definitely. what about what could be a potential party pooper? You know, the monsoon is something that we're waiting for. But uh, you know, before we're going to highlight a lot of stock sectors, and we'll get a little euphoric as the session goes by. <laughs> but you want to put some caution on board first? No. So I don't want to put any caution. I don't think there is any reason for caution. But if you have to think about two big risks, is one is of course that valuations go overboard, uh, and that can happen. I don't think it is at market-wide level, but at a company level, sector level, it can happen. Yeah. And uh, second thing is, of course, we are all constantly worried about what's going to happen in the 2024 elections. Mm. That's the big unknown. Mm. But I think there is still about 12-15 months to go, and uh, during that period, we can still have a rally. So those are the only two things that uh, we should be worried about. So the markets have risen for the fourth consecutive week, right? And although the Sensex and the Nifty went up about 1% this week, it was the mid-caps where all the action really lay. And uh, in that context, you know, Anuj, a lot of things took place, right? Uh, mid-caps have come back in a big way. So many pockets have come back, whether it's, uh, you know, some of these auto ancillary companies, the um, defense companies, yes. uh, some mid-cap IT companies have come back as well. So. Uh, although the headline index doesn't say it much, all the parties beneath the surface. Oh, absolutely. In fact, you know what? Uh, the Sensex and Nifty, they hit closing highs. Today we hit closing highs. So for all practical purposes, for a lot of people, closing levels matter a lot. Uh, so we hit new highs. Uh, and you know what? All-time uh, uh, highs were also within sniffing distance. But at least closing highs were achieved. One more thing, the mid-cap index actually hit a new high every day of the week. Monday hit a new high, Tuesday a new high, Wednesday a new high, Thursday a new high, and today also a new high for the mid-cap index. Uh, I think the point you made about, uh, uh, you know, uh, themes and stocks, uh, I think that's very relevant. I think what's driving this movement, just to take the point forward that Ravi also mentioned, you know, earnings growth is something which has clearly been a big factor and that's taken this market forward. In fact, I was looking at the fact that FY23 EPS has gone up about 10% from FY22. And, uh, you know, the index trades at 19.5 times. You know, I was talking to Sunil Sanghani the other day. He said the euphoria starts at 23, 24, 25 times. You know, it goes up to even 50 times. What are we talking about right now? In October 2021, the Nifty was at 18,600. Mm. Today, one and a half years later, we are at uh, 18,800. And in between, we've had one and a half years of about 20% earnings growth. Mm. So the market itself is not very expensive. And, you know, uh, another point, there's a lot of money chasing stocks. Uh, there's a lot of appetite. Look at the example of today's listing. Uh, the uh, the IQ listing, IQ. right? Uh, I think 40-45% premium <coughs> and a lot of people say that even at these levels perhaps it's not uh, horribly expensive uh, and may still be a good bet. So it just tells you uh, that clearly uh, the market is chasing ideas. Uh, in terms of leadership, Sonia, it's also imperative to note that FMCG and auto, that's really been the backbone of this market and yeah. both these indices have been phenomenal and making new highs. Of course, near-term leadership is with pharma and metals but uh, 
the only sector which has sort of uh, not made up its mind yet is nifty it yeah. i think that's still around the 200 day moving average in, in between you mm. still have a tcs kind of news the large cap it still has problem mid cap it i think is is fine uh, and one last point that i normally follow this is my own indicator i look at uh, the market from the stocks at 52 week high yeah. and 52 week lows uh, in march we had made the point that 52 week low stocks were at 800 and that normally when you hit that you are at the bottom now look at the number of stocks at for 52 week high it's only 220 euphoria so will happen a lot of time that will happen when this number will hit 500 to 600 when this number hits 500 600 i'll be the first to say that you know it's time to be cautious but i think as ravi said i mean there's no way close to euphoria just because prices have gone up it doesn't mean that you know the market is euphoric okay so no way close to euphoria i think that's a great place to be right even if there's any fomo factor in the market if retail wants to jump in perhaps it's not too late just yet but uh, you know anuj was making this point about the two spaces that have done well and fmcg is one of them i mean record highs is what we saw in the fmcg index this week uh, any of these stocks where you think there's still valuation as well as growth comfort no so from uh, see i feel the rural uh, rural indian economy has been going through a tough patch for the last 3 4 5 years what happened is during covid uh, the wa- inflation uh, sorry wages fell and the inflation up post that rose a lot and that squeezes the uh st- spending power a lot now it's actually reversing the inflation is falling and the wages are rising up uh, add to that the fact that state capex has been virtually non existent for the last 4 5 years and for the first time it is picking up this year the state capex will pick up and usually when uh state capex picks up the r- rural areas do very well so i think there is a lot of uh tailwind to the rural growth story so i think even fmcg fmcg is just one way of playing the rural growth story uh whether it is two wheelers or other consumption stories everything will do well uh, some urban uh, probably urban consumption story can take a <coughs> step back but the rural story has just begun i feel mm, okay nimesh uh, very interesting moves in the market and i think i was looking at the data that you had sent uh, in terms of the kind of stocks which are hitting new highs and you know what's happening in the uh, overall market why don't you take us through what you have well I, before i talk about the stocks and and uh, you know uh, just from a dealing room perspective yeah. let me just give a feedback sure. uh, we hit a all time high uh, you know while the markets were volatile the one consistent part this week was the return of fii money and this is serious money you know the feedback from dealing room was that one of the one of the largest sovereign fund has looked to increase the india weight and that's the reason why we saw every day this week uh you know the, uh, the fi was a net buyer in the indian market so that's that's one thing the other interesting thing was the, which has been consistent for a while now is the pe exits like uh, even this week we saw a lot of blocks imagine on a sunday last sunday there was a there was a block launch of go go fashion and 10% of private equity was sold out in 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 48 hours in 24 hours so that's the kind of appetite which is there this week we also saw access bank large block pe exit and today we saw kalyan jewel as the reporting data will come but even there a large pe has put on has given an exit so that's one big big theme that's that i've been that i've been tracking the other big theme is the revival of ipo market that's what everybody's been now talking about look we look we saw what happened with today's listing ended at a 45% premium since mankind you know the, the momentum seems to be picking up so that's the other theme to watch out that apart from p exits there are a lot of uh, ipos which are likely to revive and that pipeline looks very strong now for the remaining of the year so that's that's the big theme that return of fi money with a large sovereign fund looking to in, uh, increase the india weight okay uh, ravi in fact on that so just to take that point forward a uh, lot of insider selling over the last 2 uh, or 3 months uh, by insider selling i i don't mean uh, you know uh, anything promoters. wrong uh, promoters or large investors pe investors lot of ofs is getting launched lot of blocks uh, uh, so should one keep an eye on that uh, as as a bit of a red flag so you know uh, sitting in india we sometimes don't get the perspective of the relative uh, vis-a-vis other markets and i recently did a trip to middle east and southeast asia and what i figured is that they are hurting badly whether it is in china whether it is in us tech so uh, us is also having a rally since last 4 weeks but it's very concentrated, very concentrated. in the top 7 stocks absolutely while over here it's a very broad based stock yes. uh, rally and uh, what has happened in the last uh, 15 18 months is whether it's in the listed market or in the private equity market people have had a chance to book their gains and take the money back and now and of course we didn't uh, collapse under the weight of 40 billion dollar selling and that adds a lot of depth and credibility to indian markets mm. so sitting outside those guys are looking at if i'm looking at the world there are probably india and japan are the only two stories noteworthy you know outside of us and us is not so bullish at this juncture of course 
stocks are rallying. As I said, it's a very narrow rally and it's all AI driven. But so India is now almost becoming that, uh, again, I would cliche, but the <laughs> Tina factor, Tina. as you say, in the emerging market basket, people want to have a non-Chinese exposure and India is a natural choice. So I feel uh, uh, we are still at the beginning of the rally. Uh, you should look at it in a positive way. People are getting exit out of 18 months yeah. and uh, there is still a lot of appetite. You can never judge or estimate how much of money will come into India. But I think there's a, a wave or a flood coming and uh, all of the whoever wants exit will get exit. It's not an issue. A wave is fine. It shouldn't be a flood. <laughs> that you don't take everything. As I said, we cannot judge how much it, how large that wave will be. Okay, all right. Let's focus back on the mid cap space. Now we should put some data together. You know, we are talking about a 10%, 15% move on the index. Yeah. Stocks are up 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. Tell us, run us through the list and but, some. But I tell you, the, the whole idea of this piece was to, to just to prove a point that, as what even Ravi said, even Anuj pointed out, yeah. there is still no euphoria in the market, and that shows in the data as well. Look at why. Y2D, the performance of the broader indices. The Nifty is up 4%, almost at all-time high. The mid-cap index uh, is up 11.5%, but it's already at an all-time high. The small-cap index, though it's up 10%, it's still 10% away from all-time high. You know, that's where uh, the euphoria will come. When the small-cap index, which is all-time high, try, you know, actually when it trades at a premium to large-caps and mid-caps, that's when the euphoria signs will come in. So, that I just wanted to put that into, into context. Now, look at the, uh, I've just looked at the BSE uh, small-cap big movers this year. I mean, it's not like, you know, there are some, some crazy moves. Uh, uh, if you look at the top gainers, something like an Orion Pro is up uh, two times, which is up 200, 200%. Nuclear software is up almost two, uh, two times. But again, the numbers are quite strong in that company. <laughs> WPIL is another company which is up 100, 150%. Stocks like Zentech is up close to, uh, 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 you know, 122%. So, you know, there are some good stocks which have done well, but they are not like crazily valued or like, some big moves happening in the BSE small cap index. Even if you look at the Nifty small cap index, the, the, the top gainers in that list, some quality names which have moved up today. Scient, Scient this Y2D uh, is up 84%, Real uh, RVNL is up 80%, KEI Industries, again, company which reported good numbers, that's up 50%, Mazgao Dog is up 50 odd percent. So that's the, uh, that's the list in the, in, the broader in the broader markets. Now, also I've looked at uh, the, the larger universe, which is the Nifty 500, mm -hmm. the larger basket, and I've seen where there has been big movers Y2D, here I want to just put some numbers and the valuations as well. You know, something like a data pattern in the in the broader markets, that's up 71% this year. But now on FY24 earnings, it's quoting at 66 times. So something we need to watch out for, something like a Triveni injuring, now quoting at 52 times. ABB India is now quoting at 76 times on, on FY24 earnings. Uh, you know, CG Power 66 times, Siemens India, Astral is trading at 80 times, and one stock which, which is trading above 100 times is Met Plus. It's trading at 117 times on FY24 earnings, and even that stock has rallied 30% this year. There are some losers as well. They've lost this uh, this year Y2D, but again, valuations are quite high. Aditya, Aditya Bella Fashion is one stock <laughs> trading at 100 times. Uh, you know, Vmart is trading at 100 times. Campus Shoes is trading at 57 times. So uh, the list is basically, you've seen a bit of move in the mid cap and broader markets as well. There are some stocks where valuation is now getting a little expensive, so one needs to be careful. I won't say expensive, but richly valued now. So that's something to take to take note of. But the fact is the, uh, the Nifty small cap index, it's though it's up 10%, why today? It's, it's still 10% away from all time high. So all Ravi, you know, that's what we discussed as well, right? There are some stocks, even in your, in your portfolio, which have done really well for you out of your expectations, and now valuations are becoming a little expensive. How do you do, how do, you do to those stocks? You know, what do you do with those stocks? Do, do you book profits or you sit on it? No, so, uh, it's a good problem to have, first of all. <laughs> uh, see, uh, first of all, you have to have a view on the structural story. Hmm. In a two, three years' time, do you foresee the absolute market cap of the company being even higher from here or no? And secondly, uh, markets or stocks very rarely peak just based on extra excess valuation. You know, uh, extra excess valuation is a necessary condition, but not the only condition for the markets to peak out. If the momentum at the business level continues, the valuations can keep expanding. And there is no way to judge uh, whether this is the peak or no. But in general, the way the business cycle is panning out, I still feel we are at an early stage of the overall economic cycle. It is the early stage of CAPEX cycle. It is the early stage of ordering in the defense sector, railway sector. I, uh, and market has recognized this is the round one. So defense has been rallying for the last two years. Sure. Railway stocks have been rallying for the last one and a half year. But I don't think that uh, they have reached a level from where, you know, 
there could be a 90% price erosion or any such thing. There can always be 20-30% kind of a pullback because valuations get expensive. And then once the number delivery comes, they'll find okay. buyers again. Mm -hmm. uh, so those kind of things can happen. But sure. I don't see a capital loss kind of a risk right now. Okay, now let's do one thing. Let's uh, talk about one more interesting aspect. Nigel has done some interesting research on holding companies uh, and uh, how they are stacking up, some of them at least. You know, I, I was a little cautious while putting this piece together because the fear is, are we in that euphoric phase? But since the consensus is saying they're not, I feel a little bit more comfortable. Let me go to the big wall and explain this in greater detail. You know, so we're focusing on holding companies out here. And uh, first you'll ask me, what what is the benefit or why should we be looking to play a holding company? One is you get a chance to play a bigger, you know, group or a larger set of stocks. The underlying value obviously is at a bit of a discount. And also, if the group is good and it's a well-run group, then you'll be getting dividends because the core company will be paying some dividend, the holding company gets it, and then you'll indirectly uh, get in there. So we're not going to look at all the holding companies. I said, let's focus on five big groups. First up, we're looking at the Bajaj group, and there are two companies in there. One is Maharashtra Scooters, and the other one is Bajaj Holdings. Now, Maharashtra Scooters, in the last one year or so, they have increased their dividend, and if you club the interim as well as the final dividend, it was nearly around 150 rupees. The stakes that they hold in various companies, group companies, should come up for you on the screen. And to summarize it, well, the company, Maharashtra Scooters, the discount to the value of its holdings is nearly around 75%. Can this decrease go ahead? Well, time will tell. The other one is Bajaj Holdings. Out there, we have already seen that discount narrow a little bit. So, and the promoter entity in there has gradually been increasing some stake in there by a couple of percentage points or which could explain why the holding company discount as well has narrowed a little bit. That's their top holdings that they have. That's Bajaj uh, Holdings. While if you look at the summary, well, that holding company discount from around 70%, 60-70% has come down to around 46% approximately. Next up on the screen would be Tata Investments. Now, they calculate the value of what they're holding as of 31st of March. So, I equated what would the market cap be on, uh, you know, the 31st of March. And putting those numbers together, the holding company discount is close to around 55%. But one thing about the company is they've started gradually increasing the non-Tata group companies as well. So, close to around 75% of their holdings is towards Tata groups. And the list comes up in the screen, but close to 25% is from non-Tata group as well. So they're diversifying themselves a little bit. Sundaram Clayton, in fact, that stock this week was a big outperformer in comparison to the TVS Motor stock as well that it holds. So let's run you through a few details. They've already given a fixed component. That's around 1,160 rupees, non-convertible share that you already would have got if you bought it a few months ago. But as of now as well, there's a scheme that's currently underway. So the value of the business that has to be demerged even from here is around 1,200 crores. They do around, you know, sales of around 1,200 crores approximately. It's a profitable business as well. So at least 1,200 crores. So X of that, if you look at the business and then you take out the value that they have in TVS Motors, you know, it's still the holding company discount is quite large. That's around 75% in terms of the holding company discount. Moving to Kidloskar Industries, well, that as well has taken a whole host of companies that come up to you on the screen. But the holding company discount out there is only around 46%. But I went further into their annual report and their presentation, and they have a couple of real estate assets in Pune. So close to 2 million square feet of developable land, as well as 75 acres of land as well that they have in Pune. So maybe that could be one of the reasons why that holding company discount is narrow. And finally, EID Parry, well, we had the management who told us that the ethanol sales will move up uh, from year on, which is uh, important. They've also said that, in fact, you know, the interest cost, that's been gradually coming down. That's because they've sold some part of their stake in Coromental Finance. So summing it up then, you have the holding company discount out there is close to around 71%. So to put all those, uh, you know, groups up for you on the screen, well, it looks like Maharashtra Scooter, that could be interestingly poised, as well as Sundaram Clayton. Will they narrow? Could, could this be an indirect play? Well, time will tell. Back to you. All right, thanks a lot for that. Well, let's do one thing. Let's take a quick commercial break on that note. On the other side of the break, we talk about how auto stocks have been some of the best performers this year and what are the key triggers that are driving growth. We'll also get uh, Ravi's view on the auto space. In case you missed out on the rally, what do you do now? More on that coming up in a bit. Stay tuned.